One does not seek strength to be superior to fellow human beings, but to fight one's own shortcomings, such as faults, vices, evils, and bad habits. If a person has done evil once, he should avoid repeating it and should not take pleasure in the evil done or even accumulate it because suffering and harm inevitably result from it. However, if a person has done good, then he should do it again and again and increase his work in this regard because joy and happiness arise from it. Good words followed by a good deed will never just languish fruitlessly. Wise words that are not followed by a good deed will always languish uselessly and fruitlessly. Since man must commit, recognize, and remedy mistakes to strive for higher things and progress, it is not granted to him to live in flawlessness that does not continuously bring new mistakes that must be explored and corrected at their core. If a person does not muster the strength to be true to himself, then he will not muster the strength to recognize the real truth and make it his own knowledge. Discovering within oneself the innermost essence of the material consciousness and the true inner nature of the spirit is an inescapable task of every human being. This alone makes it possible to find oneself. But what this path looks like to find the true inner nature of the spirit and the innermost essence of consciousness results solely from the conscious efforts made towards self-cognition. The form of the path is created through the discoveries and experiences arising from the efforts and from the resulting experience. Only people who do not disturbingly interfere with life are able to appreciate it. Looking at impermanence, becoming and passing away, it can be recognized and understood that everything that exists, both man himself and all other forms of life, and all things of every kind, are mutually related and mutually conditioned, and are in no way completely independent and autonomous, but inseparably linked to each other with every fiber. As a rule, the present does not play too much of a role for people because it is only seen as momentary. More is thought about the past, and many people like to indulge in the past. The so-called reality life, the present, thus often becomes a horror and a burden for some, because the past appears closer and is drawn nearer than the things and facts of the effective present, which seems infinitely distant due to thinking of the past. But by thinking about the past, man lives with the events of the past into the future, which also appears again as the present because the future, if it has flowed into the past, is made into a present reality. But the effect also occurs that the future is conceived through thought and made into present-day thought material, which in turn leads to horror and stress. Becoming self-aware is the best possibility to truly live. Man's consciousness is like a fertile field in which all kinds of good and valuable seeds are sown, which can both be sown in the womb or be innate. But they could have also been sown by the education of parents, relatives, friends or acquaintances, as well as by strangers, by society, or by one's own efforts. However, it is always about germinating the seeds so they grow into good, healthy, and nutritious fruits that when used, bring love, harmony, progress, peace, tranquility, knowledge, and wisdom, as well as freedom, humanity, truth, balance, and success. When you just sit still, don't nurture thoughts, and just breathe in and out. Attentiveness and clarity develop. Although people live, 
many of them are not actually alive, because they are just vegetating in their consciousness-based existence, unable to evolve consciously and to touch their life in the present moment and to realize it in all its truth and existence and effectively use it progressively. If man were to create order and purity within himself as well as peace, harmony, love, and freedom, he would have much more joy in all things in life. Truthfully, however, there is chaos in man and an excess of desires, cravings, and wishes, to which he alone gives importance and to which he indulges and pays homage. This is the reason why a strong and constant self-centeredness prevails and the innocence of all real and valuable things outside one's own ego are not perceived. All kinds of unimportant things and passions are considered important, while the truly important things of life are considered unimportant. A rigid strategy can never win just as a rigid tree cannot withstand a storm. One should work and fulfill all of one's duties as long as one can. And in doing so, one should never set limits by age. However, one should always fulfill one's duties and work within reason, which is why one should be careful not to gradually kill one's body through overexertion and too much work. This, however, should not lead to idleness, for he who rests, rusts. Therefore, the body and its strength should always be used sensibly until old age. But one should be careful not to overwork, because one should always remember that the body is given in kind, but cannot be recreated in the current life. Therefore, one should be careful that the way of life and all things in life are always such that they help the body and consciousness to a healthy existence. And this also includes work in a reasonable measure until old age. Therefore, one should take care of the body with appropriate work, through which also the activity of the consciousness is maintained and promoted unstoppably until old age because lingering in idleness rapidly deteriorates the general condition of the body, consciousness, and psyche, from which all kinds of suffering arise as well as a failure in the fulfillment of life. Creation is the power from which everything is born. It is the genderless principle of the spirit of creation, which is also in man and manifests itself in him. Therefore, he is one with creation itself, and it is one with man, and it permeates him in every moment. Many a person is rigid and inflexible when alive, but when he is dying, he becomes soft, receptive, and forgiving, because he is plagued by the fear of death. Man constantly finds changes in the world. New things are constantly being created, and new life is constantly being formed, which is full of new meanings. So it is a bit difficult for man in every moment of his existence, because everything is always new for him, as well as all the knowledge that he has to develop evolutionarily every day. He must constantly face the changes and must also research and seek within himself, for he is not yet perfect, but a beginner in the field of true knowledge, wisdom, love, and freedom, as well as harmony, equalizedness, and real peace. Man only acquires these values by coping with all the changes that he must find, develop, and make usable as a wanderer through countless lives in his own inner conditions, and which he must create in his inner self, in his personality, as well as in his character and in his psyche for the good and better of himself. One should always plan for the difficult when everything is still easily executable. 
The big things should be handled when they are still small and inconspicuous. Man always lives in the present moment, even if he steps into the future and has put the past behind him. Looking at this present moment, one recognizes in it actual life with all its struggles, demands, desires, and hopes, which are miraculously fulfilled if one consciously strives for it honestly and reverently. Their fulfillment is like a miracle, but it cannot be compared to being able to float through the air without wings, because the miracle lies in breathing, living, existing being able to walk along the ground in the present moment, to feel existence and to be able to enjoy its beauty and all the true peace, freedom, tranquility, true love and harmony that reveal themselves in every moment of life, despite all the adversaries and negative influences that appear in life, but are a part of life itself.